Hello everyone, welcome to the Decision Intelligence uh, track. I will be your host for today. My name is Anita Jovic. Uh, I'm the founder of uh, AI Serb organization. And uh, for today, we have uh, our first speaker, uh, Josip uh, Shaban, and he's the solution manager at Erste Digi Digital. Uh, I also want to say that it's a huge pleasure to see you everyone today here, especially in person. So I'm really happy to, to see your faces and to say hi to people online as well. And uh, Josip is a solution manager at company Erste Digital, joining us from Austria. Uh, Josip is an experienced IT manager with more than 15 years in uh, software development, people leading at technical project management, both in corporate and startup environments, with uh, the experience more than a decade in finance industry as well. So we're really happy that he is uh, talking today about uh, data visualization in Python. So Josip, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. First, it's amazing to be online on the lectures. Last three years, it was more or less virtual. So it's thank you again for making an online and on-site event. The topic is data visualization, and I'm grateful for an amazing intel. Uh, I, I'm blushing who added the things I didn't put in, but it was amazing. Thank you. Um, the agenda of the day is one hour lecture on something which I usually hold for two to three days. Uh, so I unfortunately will be a little bit summarizing the topics, but what I will try in one hour is uh, data visualization. And it's not just about how to do it. In this case, it's Python, but I'm usually doing it in Tableau or Power BI. The technology here doesn't matter. The point is, I will discuss first the basics of how we see, how we perceive, how we understand the visual, then really, really small intro to the concept of storytelling with some examples and further reading. Uh, I had already an amazing introduction, so I will skip this slide. Uh, if somebody wants to ask something or connect on LinkedIn, I'm quite easy to find. If you are looking for a bigger version of this lecture, you can find it on my GitHub, PowerPoint at least, and some other topics I do. Why are we here? It's a specialized area. If you do data science, usually you do it at the end, at the beginning, in the middle, but you do it just because you do it. You don't, you don't really focus on it, you just do it. And this topic is something that usually you do not learn. You just do it because it's nice to see. And the idea of data visualization in general is to show you how you can do it better and why is it important to do better. And you need domain knowledge. Without domain knowledge, you will use a line graph, bar graph, column stack, something, and you will not understand there is an enormous amount of potential lost. Because now we have hundreds of chart types available, usually for free, coming within Python, with data, with data Power BI, within Tableau, and you are not using it. You are using five chart types. And it's a separate field. It's a field which you study, and when you study, it comes naturally. But at some moment, you have to study. You have to learn it. So where do we start? Usually we start with visual perception. How do we perceive things? And if you will be interested in this topic, I will give you books in the end, and I really motivate you or support you to read them. But I will now focus on really small parts of effective visualization, and this is eyes. We which means, what do we see? And there is a very famous exercise done here, which for which we do not have a time, is how much we see and how much we remember. And the exercise is quite simple if you want to do it yourself. Try to look at any room like this one, look at it, and then turn around. And what do you remember? Yet your eyes saw everything you remembered maybe 5%. And 
And the point of effective data visualization is that you make your audience, your receiver, be in that 5%. So what works? The first thing and the only concept of nine I will show because I have only one hour and I want to do code is uh, pay attentive processing or what is basically known as pattern recognition. And there is a famous AGI test, which slides you can aid later. If you would go to an interview, maybe 10 years ago, there was two terrible questions which they would all ask. One question is, where do you see yourself in five years? Usual answer in your chair. What is the question that is the answer? The second one would be this kind of test. Count the number of something in line and you would suffer. Because your brain is not made to count in a line order, one by one. He is made to do this, to perceive patterns. How many fives are here will take you minutes and you will suffer, you will be tired and you will make a mistake. How many fives is here takes you maybe 10 seconds and you will probably not make a mistake. This is, how they, this is the basis of data visualization. Make patterns recognizable and memorable. Second topic, do not compare uncomparable. You have two circles. What can you say about them? This one is small, this one is big. How much smaller or bigger, you do not know. But if you are asking your audience to believe that this is five times smaller, and you are now comparing volumes of sale or something, the end user, your audience, the PowerPoint guy who is aiding it, he will ask himself, is this really five times? And he will not listen to what you are saying, but his brain will try to copy paste this circle inside five times. You lost the audience. And it's based on four basic principles, which come to us by evolution. Proximity, closure, similarity, and enclosure. First principle is proximity. When we do a visualization, any kind, there are four things we need to be careful. Categories, subcategories, distance between items, and exceptions. And if we do something like this, and this can be dots in a data set, what will your brain say? These are all of the same category and they all come together. If we make a split between whatever we say to the audience, your brain will think these are, this is the same category, but there is a difference between them. And if you are saying this is all the same thing, no, it's not. Your brain will tell you it's not. You will lose attention. What does this mean? We have two categories, completely different, and there is a separation sign. If we do something like this, what is the message we want to send? We are, have two data sets, they're generally same, but we have outliers. And then if you present, you give the tool the ability to create something like this, you present and say, we have two data sets which are basically the same, your audience will not listen to your words, at least not 100%, but we'll focus on the outliers. This is evolution and don't fight it. Second topic is closure. Do not draw items which are open. If I tell you we have a project, we finished it 100%. It was amazing, we did a closure and you show something which has an open thing. It can be a logo of the company. Nobody will listen to you that you are done. Everybody will say, what's missing? It's subconscious, loses the attention. Third concept is similarity. Similarity is we group things subconsciously. We have one project, one team which developed amazing things and your tool do dots, triangles and circles. No, these are take categories and you are discussing one project. Why do we have T categories? Why do I have triangles? Why do I have circles? And if you're going to MS project, it will be the gun chart. Why do I have ticker lines? Why do I have this? If I have data sets, why do I have different colors? And you are discussing the content and your audience is basically asking a completely different question. 
And the last thing we do subconsciously is enclosure. Things we connect together in boxes are boxes. They're categories. Don't allow the tool to play with your way of thinking. What is it here? One big category, some outliers, and a huge subcategory of same items. But we are discussing a same data set, but here we found something. And you are talking and talking, and the person asking is why do we have a box? These are four principles of how we evolutionary start to think. And there were tools that did these kinds of things, and your efficiency, so your way of to make the audience understand, you lose attention, you lose the message. And I put this on a slide, you read it, I gave the slides to them. But these are the four principles of please be careful and don't go against them. And there are nine principles of data visualization. And since I have only one hour, I really want just to focus on two and I will really fast. Maximizing data -ing. when you do something, don't show more than necessary. This is uh, electroencephalogram, so brain waves. What do we have here? Time, one second, if you do not see, and categories. That's it. No logo, no page number, no fancy background, no header. Do they add to the message? No. We want to show body mass in kilograms to brain mass in grams. What do these dots mean? This is auto-produced by almost any visualization tool. Do I care about these dots? No. And then I discussed that the elephant is one of the smartest animals on planet. And I'm showing a dot. Dot brings no emotion, no feeling, no connection. A simple change, which will make more effort to make, because you need to at least download these pictures, will give a much harder impact to the audience. The second of nine principles is charge junk. And this is using the tool to show off I can click, I can use colors, my God, I can even use 3D stuff. Does this give a benefit to my audience? Not really. Don't overuse the ability of the tool. Always keep it simple. And these slides, we are on a data science conference I left in just to make you think. You already know most of these topics. And Always try different graphic forms. There are multiple graphic forms. There are hundreds of them. I will give you a good site to see. Don't stick to one line graph pie chart, which is terrible anyway. Uh, uh, column bias stack or whatever. And there is a site called DataViz Catalog. And this site has a comparison of hundreds of tools, uh, graphic forms. And there is one little important link here, search by function, which allows you to say, I need a graph for telco industry, this, 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 and he will give you suggestions. And there, are, behind every of these categories, there is a 50, 60 more. Only on this site, you can find maybe a four figure number types of visualizations. And you can find the library in R or Python which will support most of them. So don't be stuck on the usual ones. Same story. Plot what you want to show. If somebody asks you income and expense, they're actually asking you net income. Don't put two graphs if you can do it in one. And this is a quite a famous example of Earth's yearly average temperature, which means there is no increase in temperature, but you put from 1980 to 2012, and you put from zero to 50. So if you show it in this scale, temperature really doesn't change. But if you can aid, if the temperature would be 50, we would anyway be all dead. Very very, very early in the evolution. 
But if you change the scale, things might show a little bit differently. Then you change the scale even more, and then you put a scale between minimum and maximum, and then you might see a little bit of a difference. So if the newspapers wants to say nothing is changing, they will put 0 to 50, but this scale makes no sense because it will never be zero average temperature, and if it's 50, it doesn't matter. So don't lie with scales. The tool might do this automatically, but this is what you want to show to the audience. The same topic, of course, applies to visualization, and it's even here more obvious than when you deal only with numbers. And Dimensionality principle is again the fault of TD. 178, 153, 159, and you have a link here where to find this one. And when you see it, 178 looks amazingly big. And they even made it as red, which is a color of blood, which means important, danger. But compare actually the numbers, the difference is not so big, but your brain interprets this. This is amazingly bigger. This is how you do it visually. And don't do this visually. So before I get in there, there was a site called OKCupid. And when they went more or less bankrupt, they published their data set. You can find it easily by Google, anonymized. And with this data set, they published who liked who. And don't lie with averages, because they published, and what people did, they started to play with averages. What does this slide tell you? And again, it's lying with visuals. Is that mostly women like their own age. But these are averages. How much are you hiding? When you see somebody present you an average, ask what is outside of this average. There is an enormous amount of data set which is lost. So if you want not to lie to your audience, don't use averages on the slide. To be fair, I always put the other way around. Men are more simple than women. This is the men result. Whatever the age group, the answer even on average was more or less the same. So, and by the way, if you want this analysis, just Google OKCupid okay, data set people did much more amazing analysis on GitHub. Of course, it's fully anonymized, but still the relations apply. And the last theoretical topic is a dashboard. Everybody likes dashboards. Management wants dashboards. Dashboards are amazing. The visual displays, and at the end I give you a book just on dashboards. There are some concepts. They have to fit on a single computer screen, and they have to monitor information at a glance. They have to be, you look at it and you see it. And it's a type of display. You need to learn how to do it. In a real workshop, I would now force you to take pen and paper, close the laptop, close the phones, and start drawing with hand the dashboard. And there is a primary principle of dashboarding. It's that this is the most important area. Whatever you are interested in, or whatever you are creating the visualization for, you create it in top left corner. Because when you were a kid, you started to read from top left corner. Whatever you don't care, you put in a lower right corner. Before we go to code, best practices in data design. When you open a tool, this is Tableau. Hi. When you open a tool, this is Tableau. And you give it a category list, he creates you something like this. He creates you 50 colors, and he creates you dots. Is this useful? Not really. Is this useful? Well, if you want a general how the population is forming, it's fine. But if you want details, it's still not useful. This is a little bit more useful. Still too much data shown on one graph, but more useful. Don't do this just because the tool auto-generates it. Always think about your audience. Second topic, we were learned to read horizontally. Category, subcategory, years, 
details. What happens if you give a tool, again, this is in this case Tableau, uh, how you do it vertically? You have to force your head to tilt to the left or right. You have one line of categories, you have the other line of categories, and then you have details which are again vertical. Why do I show Tableau and not Python, and this is a Python lecture? For the same reason which I told you in the first sentence. It doesn't matter which tool you use. Principles of data visualization are the same. There are 10 things, I will not go through them. This is why I leave you the slides. And when you really, really start doing something which is useful in data visualization world, then you will start to use these guys. And it will come naturally. You will start to see things that are wrong. I leave them, I give you books, I read them later. Code. And before we go to code, because I always do more code than talking, uh, these are the things, if you are interested in this topic, which you should take a look at. Uh, there's an amazing PWC on Coursera specialization. Um, it's called um, executive visualization, whatever. And forget the marketing inside, but they really do an amazing course on effective business presentations. And they do visualization. They really do it good. If you want to do it really deep in Python, this is, uh, again, Coursera. And this is a little bit lighter reading. If you like books, this is a book, entire one, a classic, about dashboards. There's an entire book, Wait on How to Create a Good Dashboard, 250 pages, step by step, how to create a dashboard. It's not as easy as you think. If you want to see the newspapers industry, uh, Mr. Cairo wrote a book, How Newspapers Are Lying to You, how they show data which is technically correct, but to send the message they want to send. And the classic of Mr. Tafter, of course, how to show quantitative information. It's not technology related. You will see pictures from Cognos in 1995. It doesn't matter. The principles are the same. And some really, really cool books on Python, Python, and Tableau. Again, principles are the same, whatever code you use. So now I will sit down. And I cannot execute because this is not my laptop. Happily, I have it executed before. And then we go to code. So I'm now going to switch to code. And uh, before the lecture, I loaded uh, in some kind of uh, uh, application I found. And this is pre-executed. All of this code is uh, given to colleagues on the conference, so they will be given to you. I will go a little bit faster. What I will focus are the libraries. Yes? Uh, what did I do wrong? Ah, I need to dig and drop. Okay, sorry guys. Does this? Uh, what? Ah, this guy. Super, thank you. Uh, I'm going back. I know, I know it's not visible. I just wanted to comment on the slide. Uh, this one. There are two main libraries, Matplotlib and Seaborn. Matplotlib is a basic library where you code. Seaborn is a vapor around Matplotlib. And Plotly gives you the ability to create it directly for the web. So he basically does the same thing, so a little bit different things, but creates you an HTML page which you can then include in your web app. So I'm now closing again the PowerPoint. And I want to show you the code. What you can get later is, and I will try to zoom in this one, maybe like this, or like this. So I, I don't see it on this screen, so I have to do it like this. Yes. Um, you have really basics. If you never did any of Matplotlib, or, or Seaborn, I will not show it now. You have one A and one B. This is a complete introduction, hello world. How to do line charts, how to do this. This is a code 
which is you know, hello world of this thing. What we will now a little bit show is uh, exploratory data analysis, but using visuals, not just using code. And I will show plotly. If you will want advanced, maybe we will have time. I will show you the advanced one. But for whoever is starting, take a look later on 1A. What I did, and again, I knew that maybe I will not have time to show everything. Uh, you see, guys? It's okay? Okay. Um, I gave you the, a lot of text. So each of the code is not really too big. You have like these boxes. But on each bo block, I gave you explanations. So if you will not have time, take these materials. I gave it to the conference, Heat up. How does it work? Again, I'm sorry I have to sit down because uh, I have to uh, do this. So EDA, usual trivial thing, some kind of data set. We load it, not data important. And uh, we load some kind of data inside. It's a CSV, some kind of this. Is, I use the one which you all know, this Boston Data Housing from Kaggle. Uh, we put some head. This is the usual intro. This is not a Python course, so I'm skipping the Python part. And we do the usual. Here I put the link to the Kaggle where I took it. And what we do is we have multiple things we can do in code or we can do visually. And now I'm starting with matplotlib. So I'm trying to do an EDA without minimal amount of uh, numbers. At the end, you will have to have numbers because somewhere you will need them. But I'm trying to show you the visual part of this. And how does it work? I'm using now the basic matplotlib. So I have, let's say, two or three variables or columns I want to check. And what I'm doing is I'm drawing them. So first you need to know something about your data. And now consider that this is not a test data set, which maybe has a few thousand rows, but we are discussing millions. And what is the other alternative approach? You load some averages, you describe, you look means, you look uppers, lower bounds, whatever. You have textual data, which is totally cool and nice. But if you really do not know anything about your data set, it's much more helpful to first start drawing it. And here you might get first an advice. You don't have to go this way. I will just show options. You might start with a scatter plot. A scatter plot is an amazing tool if you don't need any filtering. It just shows you a distribution. Then what is the second topic? You want to see a little bit on the dedicated variables. And now you see that it might be skewed to the you see here, I left you in the code. Let's see variable skewing. Which one? Well, this one on the right looks maybe a little bit more there. So let's see how many, how much. I'm not suggesting you should avoid numbers, but I'm suggesting that you should keep the visualization as an integral part because visually you will see things much more clearly, especially on larger data sets, than if you just go data approach. So now you see something. And now let's see how much. Uh, I can try. Yeah, I can try if I would know how. <laughs> Not Control, plus. Control plus it would be. Is it better, guys? Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, guys. I. Yeah. So. So who needs new spectacles? Yeah. <coughs> I saw perfectly. <laughs> uh, so next topic. Uh, now we have a sale price. We know something about the sale price. Now let's see what can we say about the sale price. And again, I can do this with code. I can get numbers out. I can get minimums, maximums. But let's see it visually. Do I need that it's at this moment, sorry, do I need at this moment that it's 1.8, 1.7, 1 1.6? No, these are just numbers. I will do them later. But I want to see it, so I do a histogram. 
now I can do some normal things we do. Let's see how many of each value we have. But on the other hand, maybe we can see it visually. So let's try to use our usual, it's, sorry, it's quite hard with arrows, so I have to do it like this. So let's see it in a column bar. And now let's go to the visual, the data visualization topic. Now it's too much, so I don't actually see everything. Okay, um, maybe better like this. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Is it still visually okay? Yes. Can your audience still focus on this? Yes. Can we add more data to this one? Of course. With few lines of code, we could put numbers here. We could put maximum. We could put an average mean. We can put quartiles here. Probably we could paint it differently. It's few lines of code. But does it give to the message? No. Create 20 visualizations. Don't try to fascinate me by giving it all on one. Follow the, follow the workflow. So now we know a little bit about our two variables. Let's continue. We need nulls. We usually need to clean up nulls. Yes, of course, it's trivial. Clean up nulls. But let's see how much actually we have. Now, what do we do? We see that we have a lot of nulls in some variables. Yes, we can look at it with code. I did the sum null, dot count, show, dumb. But here I see it visually. What is easier to analyze? A list of two, 20, 50, 60, 100 columns or a chart? But do we need more on this chart? No. We know that these guys have a lot of nulls. So maybe we cut them, clean them, delete them, whatever. What I'm showing you is storytelling with uh, data. Then, let's get some numbers on the data set. Is this good? Yes, everything here is correct. Counts, means, standard deviations, minimum, maximum, something. Do these numbers mean anything? Yes, they look good, but can I see something? Do I really, really see something? If I have a data, not really, they're okay. -ish. But if you change the approach, I will, and there is a link here I took on purpose and it's in the materials. I got this function from the, uh, as usual, Google. Otherwise nobody knows how to code anymore. Uh, let's do each by each. Yes, I can write the code like this and it would be nice if it would move down. But I can also do it like this. And I could do a lot of text. But if I know how to read box plots, this kind of scatter distributions, or something like this, now I really do know I can visualize more about data. How does it look compared to a huge set of numbers? And this is EDA. You need to learn the data. So let's continue with a little bit more advanced topics. Yes? Yes? Depends if you look for issues. No, May, uh, no but what do you want to uh, say exactly? These little guys. Yes? Yes. Uh, in so that you can see range exactly. But uh, I am, again, I'm not trying to, fo you're completely correct, by the way, thank you. I'm not trying to focus on the data analysis itself. I'm just trying to show you the visual way of doing things. But yes, you are completely correct. If there was a, a question there. <laughs> If you want it as a comment, uh, Tomislav is completely correct. If you want as a general statement, I'm not doing data analysis here. I'm just showing you the visual analysis concept. So I'm, um, I had to use this tool quite suddenly. So I hope I don't make a mistake. Um, I hope I can switch to another one quite easily. Give me a second, guys. I need a new 
Jupiter to continue and I didn't expect that there will be no Um, ja trebam doći na idući file, našao sam. So, the second demo, um, yes, start. Uh, the second demo is about Plotly and how you can use it. Yeah, yeah, I'm giving it back. How can you use it inside the web? In the second library I will show is a Plotly library of Python, which is built on top of DataGS. Uh, and there is a web page, if internet I think now works. If you are, again don't want to go to that website, there is a site called, I don't know who called it a child doctor, somebody was inventive. But on this one, he put on GitHub uh, a list of really hundreds of available child types per use. I cannot zoom in because this picture is huge. You have to do it on your monitor. And just go and get ideas. I leave this link here. And if you don't like that catalog which I gave you, the person did a complete uh, he calls it visual vocabulary. So what to use where in which case. And usually it's supported by the uh, known libraries. How does Plotly work? Well, you install it and you run it. There is nothing much fancy here. And you give it some kind of variables, you give it nodes, so it's a mode. So it's a template and you plot it. What he creates, you give it as an offline and you give him something, he creates your HTML. And what he does out is he creates you a completely functional web page. He creates you, for instance, this. He creates you a scatter plot with three lines of code of anything with some functionality on top, zoom in, filter, whatever. You have even pop-ups with three lines of code and you can include this in any PowerPoint, any presentation, whatever. So there's usually a question, okay, it's beautiful in Jupyter Notebooks, but how do I use it outside? Use this guy. Use the other libraries. I'm just showing you the concept. Huh? Yeah. Or if you, for instance, want a heat map, which I will I have enough time to show, hopefully. Um, as soon as it will want to open. Something like this, right? So he again generates your entire heat map of correlations and some properties above, which I need to scroll. So here you get some zoom ins, you get some uh, uh, zoom outs, you have some auto sizes and stuff with data. And this is everything there is about Plotly. There's really nothing else to show about this kind of uh, library. I have, if you read, I have only two examples. So this was the scatter plot and this was a box plot which I didn't create and there is a heat map and all you have to do is basically call a function and aid in the documentation what is supported. You give him a data set which you load somehow, he creates you, you give him some templates and you give him an output file name and he creates your fully functional HTML. This was my demo too. Demo one, like I said, I on purpose skipped because it's too trivial. And now we'll go to the last demo. Hopefully I will make it work and hopefully I have it executed or there will be issues. Okay, I didn't have it executed, so there will be issues. Um, which is going a little bit more advanced. And for this one, it's a problem. Uh, I will need to load the data, which will probably 
I will need about two to three minutes uh, to load. I will try to show you combination of uh, Seaborn and Plotly. And I will not go to the case studies where you can use it. I will just go to the uh, results. So to give you ideas, but my message, and again, I leave you a lot of materials you can read about it, is that it's actually not really difficult. You usually always just call something, in this case a plot function, with some kind of parameters. And these parameters are templates. Uh, so I will maybe do the screen uh, uh, you will need to give me because I was not prepared that I cannot use my laptop for this one. Uh, I need to load the data set. But a general idea of everything in my final demo is that you can choose a visualization type, you can choose a template, you can usually choose the number of bins, so categories. Uh, some custom things depending on the type of visualization you use. Basic visualization things like different uh, gap between items, opacity, uh, titles, so labels on X and Y, and that's it. So the, there is no reason not to use a lot the concepts of data visualization. So guys, now you will give me two minutes till I load the data and then we go to the last demo. And you can relax for two minutes, please. Too many people will escape. I'll be back. Good. My dear colleague, I will be extremely happy that you do until I load the and prepare the demo. Please. <laughs> no, uh, please do, please, please do, please do till I load. What I'm doing, and I don't want you to look at the blank screen, so you can maybe give me the screen back. Um, I had to a little bit, uh, how to say, adapt this lecture because uh, this is not my machine. So what I need to do is uh, I found this GUI online Jupyter notebook quite fast, and I need to load uh, the data set. What is the data set? It's a newspaper data set. Again, I found it on Kaggle. Uh, from some competition, and this 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 Jupyter notebook is based on that one. So I hope that it works because this is heavily not tested. I don't know if this is enough that he will read it, but if not, I will just go to the code. Um, And there is a question if this will work. Maybe. If it does, it will be cool. If not, you will have time for coffee. What else can I tell you? Talk and talk we can do. Um, then it will not work because this is not invalid syntax. Okay, guys, uh, last demo obviously not work. Uh, I apologize, this was technical difficulty. Uh, questions? Well, it, let, let's say it like this, comments. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, uh, comments. Or online questions, maybe, if there was any. Um, nothing. nothing. So, uh, guys, we will then end 15 minutes early. Uh, I'm one. one question. How many colors do you use, mostly use in visualization? 
uh, because somebody was late and I'm not looking at you specifically, uh, there was a slide. Usually there is a story that hugely intelligent people can see up to eight. I cannot know, I'm average, so three to four. Uh, what happens if you use more? You stop focusing on what is said and you start counting the colors. This is why people, if they're intelligent, don't put on themselves more than three or four clothing items, so they will look like charlatans. But in general, three to four colors. And uh, I didn't have time, okay, then I have one minute to go. There are no clean colors in nature. So red, yellow, green does not exist. They do not. We invented, it's called hue, we invented clean colors. They do not exist. The nature knows non-clean colors. So if you go in a forest, you will never see a pure green. And then what the tool does, he gives you a pure green, blue, yellow, and then your eyes suffer. So be kind to people and don't use the most obvious color at the end because your eyes will suffer. Thank you all. Uh, you have now 10 minutes for coffee and I apologize for the last demo. Thank you. <laughs> Questions outside. <laughs>